ಮಹೋರಾಧಿಕಮಾಧಾವಶ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತೋಯಶ್ಚಿತ್ರೀಪಾಯಶ್ರೀಗುರುಂತ ಪದಪಂಕಜಂತಿಮುಕ್ತಕುಲೈರುಪಶ್ಯಾಮರಿತಸ್ಥಿ ಅನಾರ್ಪಿತಚರಿಂಚಿರತ್ಕಿರುದಯಾವತೀರ್ಣಾಕಲಂಬಸಂದೀಪಿತಾ ವಿಶ್ವಾಂಬರೋ ದ್ವಿಜಾವರೋ ಜುಗಧರ್ಮಪಾಂದೇ ಜಗತ್ಪ್ರಿಯಕರೋ ಕರುಣಾವತಾರಿ ಮುನಿ ಲಿನಿ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಸ್ವರೂಪಾಯ ಗೌರಂಗ ಚುಡಿದಾಯ ಭಕ್ತ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಪ್ರದನಾಯ ಗದಾಧರ ನಮಸ್ತುತೆ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧು ದಿನ ಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪೀಕಾ ಕಂತ ರಾಧಾ ಕಂತ ನಮಸ್ತುತೆ ರಾಧೆ ಬೃಂದವನಾಧೀಶೆ ಕರುಣಾಮೃತವಾಹಿನಿ ಕೃಪಯಾ ನಿಜ ಪಾದಬ್ಜ ದಶನ್ಮಹಿಂ ಪ್ರದೀಯತ ಭಕ್ತ ವಿಹೀನ ಅಪರಾಧಲಕ್ಷಾಕ್ಷಾಕಮಾಧಿತರಂಗಮಾಧಿ ಕ್ರೀಪಮಯ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪಾನ ವೃಂದೇ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಚರಣಾರಬಿಂದ ವೃಂದೇ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಚರಣಾರಬಿಂದ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಗುರುದೇವ್ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀಮನ್ ಮಹಾಪ್ರಭು ಕಿ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ಗೋ ನಿತ್ಯನಂದ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಹರಿನಾಮ ಸಂಕೀರ್ತನ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಗೌರ್ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಗೌರ್ ಪ್ರಮಾನಂದ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಸೊ ಪ್ರಣಾಮ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ಫಾರ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಇನ್ವಿಟೇಷನ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಬಿನ್ ಇನ್ವೈಟ್ ಬೈ ದೇವ್ ಮಾಪ್ರಭು ಟು ಶೇರ್ ಸಮ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ರಿಗಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ Shri Harinam Nam Katha, one of the different departments of Hari Katha, if you will. So many types of Katha we can share. We have been speaking a lot about Gaur Katha these last weeks. And this is kind of a natural consequence of that. It's part of Gaur Katha, Nam Katha. Mahaprabhu himself being the one who established Shri Nam as, in one sense, our deity in the Gaudiya Sampradaya. Mm-hmm. Different spiritual traditions the name and the chanting of the name of god is is part of the practice but for us chanting of the name of god is the the practice in itself which is a very interesting idea generally that's that's somewhere in every single place but for us that's the whole thing nam dharma mahaprabhu created if you will a religion revolving around the name of god you take out the name of god you have no longer Gaudiya Vaishnavism, basically. <laughs> This is a very unique conception in which um, basically the whole of our sadhana, our practice revolving around this specific practice of Kirtan, Sankirtan, Japa, all these different nuanced expressions of, of Bhagavan in his most merciful form as Srinam. So, of course, I, w- I would like to share some words about chanting and what's supposed to what's the meaning of chanting for us and what's what's impl- which are the implications of participating in sankirtan as we are trying to do in this 12 hour kirtan program and as you may recall shila prabhupada will define it the, the chanting as the crying of, of, of a child for his father basically you know? so he very interestingly begins with this unique notion of chanting as crying mm-hmm. Nowadays, you have all these types of weird yoga, beer yoga, gun yoga, ganja yoga, and what, <laughs> what not. 
but we have our own type, which is not weird, although it might seem weird for some, which is crying yoga. That's our that's another way of defining kirtan, basically. It's a way of trying to 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 to, to offer some tears from, from the heart of our hearts while we are trying to offer ourselves to, to Bhagavan. Like Govinda Maharaj very famously say when he opened one of his ashrams, he said, This is not actually an ashram, or basically it's an ashram, but the meaning of ashram is this is a crying school. So we are here trying to learn how to cry for Krishna. That's bhajan. Take the hand of your guru and ask him to teach me how to cry. Basically. I mean, we know how to cry. We can even go to a theater school and learn how to cry. But this is the real, the real offering of our tears. There are different levels of tears. You can cry as a badajiv, as a conditioned soul, but Krishna says that's unnecessary lamentation. So the proper you use that expression. Do not lament for that which is not worthy of lamentation. So indirectly, he's saying there is something worthy of lamentation. <laughs> There's an ideal object of lamentation, if you will, in which we can dovetail that expression in the per most perfect way. As we were saying the other day, there is place for, for crying in eternity. And there is place for, for suffering in a way that is sweet. We are not promoting, promoting masochism here, but basically we are trying to enter into this paradoxical realm in which all things are possible. That's basically the meaning of Vrindavan given by Srila Jiva Goswami in, in Gopal Shampo. He said, Braj means that place where all things are possible. So in other words, there is suffering there, but it's perfectly accommodated in the context of harmony and love and so on. So for entering that real, my point is, we start to develop a new mode of thinking in which those things that apparent, apparently seem contradictory can find their perfect synthesis. Mm -hmm. So again, the, this crying, this calling, this chanting is a form of inviting Bhagavan to, to reside in our hearts and host him in the most perfect way. In India, they have this famous saying, Atiti Devu Bhavan. Atiti Devu Bhavan, which means basically an uninvited guest is to be treated as God himself. Very interesting notion and very deeply ingrained in Indian culture, hosting culture, if you will. And the idea is very interesting because, again, every uninvited guest, not only guest, but uninvited guest is to be treated as God, as God himself, implying God himself generally comes to our life as uninvited guest. No, that's that's Bhakti's prerogative. No, it's not waiting for us to say, hey, Bhakti, come. No. <laughs> Bhakti come, Jadri Chaya, no, out of her own sweet will. No. Bhagavan, Bhakti has their own free will. We have our own will, but there's will from the other side. So this is the experience here. So the idea is Bhagavan comes to our lives in the form of Srinam. And uh, we are expected to be good hosts, basically. Uninvited guest, but he's knocking our doors. That's the most uh, necessary knocking we need, as we were spoken the other day. Nityananda Prabhu knocking on everyone else's door. Bajagoranga offering himself, ch just chant this, offer your faith. This is a currency. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to prepare our heart to ultimately mm -hmm. make that, uh, as we were speaking yesterday. We, the, 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 the challenge is make our heart bring down, make our heart. Now that we, there we will be always there in the dam. We may be here in Ypsilanti, Buenos Aires, South Africa, or whatever, but if in your mind, if in your heart, you are connected to Sri Dam, that you are there basically. That was Mahaprabhu's subjective experience. He will see any extension of water, Jamuna, any sand dune, Govardhan. And he was right. It's not that he was wrong, ultimately. From one objective level, you may say, actually, this, this is not Govardhan and Jamuna, but from the highest supra subjective plane, he was there. <laughs> and as we were seeing yesterday with Dev Madhava, better to, to be internally in the dam, even if you were externally somewhere else, than to be externally in the dam, but internally somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, that was, I mean, I know that the time for sharing insight from the Manas Parikam already is gone. Sorry if I'm continuing here but 
but that was for me one one very important point now that if, if we all agree get together and agree okay let's focus in this direction let's invoke this particular place experience that's happening and we are there i mean that's that's the power of of determ determination and focus in one direction and all together again now we come to the notion of sankirtan which implies group work group, group effort as i like to say you cannot perform sankirtan without others if you take others and it's only you you can do some kirtan but not sankirtan yeah you can do some kirtan here some kirtan there but sankirtan <coughs> you need sangha sangha kirtan to make it samya kirtan complete kirtan so on one side we can conceive this chanting as calling krishna to come but in another way we can also say actually as we know the name of Krishna is not different from Krishna. So by chanting the name of Krishna, we are not calling Krishna, but Krishna is already in the call, if you will. Avina tuam namonami no, says the Purana. Between the name and the named, between nam and nami, there is no difference. Anshila Rupa Goswami says in the Namaskan, well, if you would like to establish some difference, because we always like to establish differences, okay, no problem. So there's one difference. Nam is more merciful than Nami. The name, the name is more merciful than the named. When someone asked to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, can you please give a definition of the name of Krishna? What, what's what's the name? What's Sri Nam? And he will say, Tamala Shyamala Tuisi Sri Yashodas Tanandaya Krishna Nam Norutiriti Sarvasastra Vinirnaya. Interesting. He will say, well, the name of Krishna is he who, who drinks the breast milk from the from Yashoda. I have I don't know I know no other definition apart from that one. Like 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 the point was for me, Krishna is Krishna's name is Krishna. He is the one who drink, drinks breast milk from Yashoda. So that's the name, he said. I like making this important point. There's no difference between the name and the name. So it's important when we are <clears throat> invoking Srinam to realize this. Of course, we can feel there is a place of course for feeling, I'm calling Krishna, Krishna, please, please come, give me your mercy. But also it's, it's nice to con con conclude if the name is not different from Krishna. Well, I'm saying Krishna, Krishna is already there. I'm not calling him come from somewhere else. He's already there in the very words I'm using to call him, he's already there. He's already immediately present in the call. So that's an interesting meditation, how to perceive him he's already there he has already come and how much do i again <clears throat> can i prepare myself to be a proper host a titi devu bhavan host of the divine so krishna is calling krishna is coming sorry i'm present in, in in the name itself and he's coming with his own how to say prerogative his own will trying to capture our hearts basically and that's our hope that's our hope that Krishna is a thief, we could say, <laughs> in the form of his name. He's the, I mean, he's known as a thief a long time ago. I mean, everyone knows that in Vrindavan. <laughs> that's not new, something new. But in the form of the name, that's a special act of thievery he's performing in, in our hearts. There's this nice story that Srila Siddhar Maharaj liked to share, where two policemen were speaking in India. Maybe you know this one. So they were in India, two policemen, they were devotees of Krishna. Mm -hmm. They were policemen. So one of them tells the other, do you know what? I think there is a problem here because our God is a thief. And we are policemen. <laughs> so we are supposed to not promote thievery, but we are worshiping the thieves of thieves. So I think this may be a problem to our execution of our duties on a daily basis. <laughs> so one of them were thinking like that. But the other one told him, no, no, actually, that's that's not the problem. That Krishna is a thief, actually, that's the the ultimate solution. Why? Because a thief, especially if, if he is the king of thieves, if you're a good thief, a, a thief doesn't care for high walls, locked doors, passwords in between. A thief has in mind, I have to capture that. I don't care whatever you put in my way. I will get to grab that. And those high walls and locked doors are the ones that we have erected around our hearts. But Krishna is so expert 
that he will enter in between all those and grab what he wants to take. No? So our hope is that Krishna is a thief, basically. <laughs> our hope is not in the high walls that we ourselves have erected. There is no hope in that direction. <laughs> so we have to call the supreme thief of thief. And, but that's why this word Hare so many times in the Maha Mantra, we have to do with the thievery spirit of Krishna. There's a place for understanding Hare in that direction. Mm. So... <laughs> In this way, Sankirtan has to do with that, no? to achieve in this, this deep sense of hope, you are a thief. No? The, and, this, and it is not a problem. Exactly, it is exactly the solution to every problem, and ultimately, that Krishna is a thief. Just in case someone asks you why your God is a thief, so you know what to tell in those moments. So we are engaging in, in this Sankirtan, in this... Um, sometimes translated congregational chanting. As we know, Kirtan has to do with uh, spreading the glories of Bhagavan. Kirtan comes from Kirti, which means fame. And in one sense, the idea is to spread the fame of Bhagavan in our own hearts to begin with. Um, because we may say, okay, let's make Krishna known for others. But also, in, automatically, the question is, how much do I know him? How much his glories, his fame, his position are known to me in every single sense. So as we spoke these days, of course, there is place for outreach, but outreach will be proportional to our in, inreach. So inreach naturally creates, as a byproduct, different forms of substantial outreach. So Sam Kirt and the word Sam is very important. We shouldn't just like miss that one <laughs> because that's what makes Sam Kirt and something complete. Sam means can mean samyak, which means complete kirtan. And of course, we can take complete kirtan in terms of, of quantity. We are a lot of people doing that. It's complete. We can take samyak in terms of complete in sense of quality, trying to avoid by nama parat. We can take some in terms of sanghas. We mentioned we need each other to do this, which is a very humbling approach to Sankirtan, and before starting Sankirtan, like, I need all of you so I can engage in this. Without you, I cannot do Sankirtan. Without, I depend on you to be connected with Juga Dharma. I cannot do it by myself. I have to do my part, but without you, my part is not enough, something like this. And I can also, and I shouldn't also tell you, okay, do your part and I do, I do not do mine. No, they will tell you, you do your part because I need you doing your part. <laughs> and we will tell, I need you doing your part. We will give support to each other. This example, I think, I don't know if I gave it being here, of Srila Siddhar Maharaj when he was at, I think I gave it here. What Sadhu Sangha? Remember? Mm -hmm. I gave it here. If you remember, maybe I give it here. Yeah. <laughs> so sorry to repeat myself. I travel too many places and don't remember where I say what. So he will say that Sadhu Sangha means, I mean, what's this definition of Sadhu Sangha? Everyone was expecting the shloka, the Shastric definition, and he quotes Napoleon. Not precisely as someone well known as Mahabhagavat, let's say. <laughs> but we can learn from everyone. So he will say, he will quote this Napoleon chair in which the soldiers of Napoleon were in one battlefield one night. It was uh, quite cold. There was snow and they were not, they didn't have a place to stay in the night to sleep on the floor. And if they will fall asleep, they basically will die. So they were wondering how to survive the night, basically. So Napoleon told them, okay, stand up in a circle. And he told one of them, now you put yourself like if you're a chair, like sit like this. And he told the other one, the, the one behind you do the same, and you do the same, and everyone do the same. So you are acting like a chair for someone, and someone else is acting like a chair for you. So you are giving support to someone, and someone is giving support to you. And this way you can survive the cold night. So Sri Dasa Maharaj will say, that's Sadhu Sangha. <laughs> it's a very substantial definition going to the very spirit of the thing. No? We are being supported by others, we are receiving support by others and we are giving support to others. No? It's not just give support, give me support, give me support. You have to play your part. Although we may feel what I'm doing is not too much compared to all that is coming, what I can offer is small thing, but you have to offer that small thing. 
nobody else can do it for you. Like the example, if you fall into a into a well, like I don't know how to say it in feet, ten meters, you translate in thirty feet. Thirty feet, thank you. And you are just in the well. You cannot do too much. You cannot go out of the well by yourself. But you are expected to do something that that nobody else can do for you. And and that is, what will you do if you are in that situation? You tell me. Yeah. Ask for a rope. Yeah, yeah, first start to yeah, cry out, help, 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 yeah. something. Nobody can do that for you because nobody else knows you are there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you have to start doing that's your part. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you have to do that part yourself. Start to cry out for help. That's what we are doing in Sankirtan, if you will. <laughs> and the help comes. And the person sees us, oh, it's compassionate. Okay, I'll bring the rope. So the person goes back, takes the rope, comes back, throws the rope. Now there's a second thing we have to do that nobody else can do, which is hold the rope. yeah, hold the rope. I mean, it's not the big thing, but you have to do that. <laughs> and the other person is doing the main effort, actually. It's taking you out. And in the midst of the of your being saved, maybe there is some, I don't know, some some bees there. Oh, they will. I, I better. You know, Stop holding the rope. Say, no, 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 no problem. Let the bees do whatever they like. I'm saving your life here. And you may say, but my hands are being hurt by holding this rope. It's not that silken like, whatever. <laughs> the person says, I'm saving your life. No, those are details. This is the principle. You're being saved. <laughs> Hopefully, we are not getting to that level. But the point is, I have to realize someone else is doing the main part and being saved. I have to do something. And eventually, when the person takes you out from the well, you won't, you won't tell that person, did you see how nicely I, I, I caught on the rope? No, mm -hmm. You won't tell that. You'll say, you saved my life. You, you are not feeling, I did it myself. But you had nonetheless to do something. So that's my point. Our individual part is there. But the group part, what we are receiving from others, that's in one sense the main thing. Although our little part sometimes feels like, oh, this is too much what I have to do myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so sometimes it helps to see the bigger picture and realize how much is coming from the other side. Mm -hmm. So so we do not victimize ourselves in the name of, of doing our part, of taking responsibility for our own lives. Mm -hmm. So so to, to engage in Sankirtan means to, to engage from that humble perspective, basically. Mm -hmm. When I'm engaging in Sankirtan, I realize I'm being rescued and being saved by, by the grace of Srinam, by the whole the whole parampara is taking that rope. Come on, you can do it. You are being <laughs> and not in, be, not engaging in Sankirtan, enacting Sankirtan from the egoic position, like I am being the chanter, if you will. I am being the, the main character here. I, I, I am engaging in independent doership. That's not Sankirtan. If you engage in Sankirtan from an independent doership side. That some kirtan, but not san kirtan, if, if you want to put it like that. Because again, kirtan means fame. The fame of Trinam has to be spread, not like here I am. Egoic position has to be retired from there. So in, in, in complete kirtan, a devotee will transcend the notion that I'm being the chanter of the name. At one point, that idea has to dissolve. We, 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 will, we, will, we won't be thinking, I am chanting. I'm being chanted or something like that. No, Srinam is possessing me and doing something. And I'm being instrumentalized by divine grace. I, I like to I like to give that play of words. You know, sometimes it is said that someone who, who writes becomes a writer. Someone who whatever who works becomes a worker and so on. And someone who prays becomes a prayer. <laughs> to, in order to pray, you have to become a prayer. The prayer is he who prays. <laughs> so similarly, you know, Sankirtan is something like that. We, we cannot just remain in that position separate. There is Kirtan and here it is me doing Kirtan. You have to somehow become you know, Kirtan-like. Some type of Kirtan Sayuja, if you will. <laughs> some merging. Into, into prayer. You have to enter into the 
the spirit of the offering into the fire of Sankirtan. Sometimes we hear this expression, hmm? Sankirtan Yajna. Yajna ir Sankirtan Apraya ir. So it's the Bhagavatam. Hmm? Krishna Varnam Tusa Krishnam and so on. So Sankirtan is, is a Yajna. And of course, Yajna is a very unique Yajna because some people may hear about Yajna and think, okay, where is the where is the spoon? Where is the ghee? Where is the, you know, the, the home and the place for the, where is all this technical paraphernalia? And it's there, although in, in, in a different way, basically. You know? For example, our 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 ears are the, the home where you where you will throw the, the ghee. And ghee is renowned for there. Our tongue will be the the spoon. Mm -hmm. Lochan Dastakur is giving all this analogy in, in the Chaitanya Mangal. Our 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 swaha, which will be the swaha, you have to enter there. You have to surrender your egoic sense of performer while engaging in Sankirtan. And if all that's in place, the fire of bhakti will reach newer and newer heights, if you will. And that's it, the real offering of ourselves in the fire of Sankirtan. Swaha means that. I offer myself to you. So we should always again. We should not take for granted all these sacred expressions. No? <laughs> we are to enter the fire. We may throw some grains into the fire. That's a user-friendly way of saying you are to enter the fire. Actually. But let's begin somewhere. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this Sankirtan, again, is all about developing, counteracting, if you want to put it on some level, the effects of Kali, which is, has to do with quarrel, hypocrisy, and the Antidote to that, the opposite of that is love. And, and, and we I like to say that love begins with because love may again may be a very one of the words that we use the most and understand the less. You know? Love, I, you, I love you, the less, the three words that we'll understand the less in this world, maybe, and we use the most. So love in one sense begins with it's a very high notion, divine love especially. But begins with cooperation, let's say, and Sankirtan has a lot to do with that. If we ha if we do not know how to cooperate with each other, how much we can speak about love? <laughs> and Sankirtan again implies cooperation. I cannot do that if you are not cooperating. So all of us are sitting together and agreeing on these terms. Okay, let's try to put our ego aside and let's try to offer ourselves in the most. Uh, sincere way possible. That's our commitment with the Sankirtan, Kirtan Mandal, if you will, with, with the circle of, of Kirtaniyas. And so real Kirtan is possible with that type of offering of ourselves, no? offering of our individual egos into the fire and for the pleasure of, of the Supreme Person, basically. Like we were saying yesterday at the end of our Manasa Parikram, like this notion of Ritu Dweep, Rudra Dweep, sorry, and, and Sakya, the connection with friendship and the importance of developing our relationships with the Vaishnavas. Now, this is a very crucial aspect of our Seva, our relationships. There we will we will see where we are standing on, actually, in our, in our Krishna Bhakti, Krishna Bhaji. Because we can say so many things. I have an example of that. I do not stop parroting. And Krishna said, oh, you say all those things. Let's see after the class if you walk your talk. So <laughs> one test after another. <laughs> and especially one is put to test in one's relationships with others. For eternity, we are, as Dev Mahal was telling the other day, our, in eternity, our main relationship on a daily basis won't be necessarily directly with Krishna, Mahaprabhu, Sri Radha, but with so many other devotees and servants with whom we will, our service will reach Full consummation at the feet of our Istadev. So it's a very important point in Sankirtan as well, working together, teamwork, cooperation, friendship among the community, the family, basically. That's one of the main offerings we can give to our guru. Once someone asks one devotee, one guru, Guru, which is the, the offering we can do to you that will please you the most? And he will say, Offer to me nice relationships among yourselves. Sometimes we do not conceive of this as a, as a service. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Working on my relationship with others, we generally do not think as that's seva. That's something pleasing to Bhagavan, Guru, Hari, Vaishnas. That's one of the most important things. You retire that, you can do so many service, <laughs> but that just 
external stuff mm. no? if the relationships are not in place or at least working for them to be in place there's always work in progress no problem mm. so so that's what we want to be part of mm. sankirtan movement we sometimes use the word sankirtan movement and, and as we know the idea of movement it's not necessarily limited or mostly mainly connected with it, an institutional notion but something deeply personal something deeply individual of connection between individuals I, I like always to say we do not join an institution but we join a heart that is beating in a particular institution and we end up in that institution because there was a heart which was beating in some way that i felt made my heart beat <laughs> I thought, okay, I want to go where that heart is. And it happens to be in this particular institutional framework. Mm -hmm. I go there, but I'm joining a heart. You follow my point? Mm -hmm. no? So when we speak of Sankirtan movement, joining a movement, joining, please try to remember, this is not limited to the institutional consideration. That's there on some level. Of course, we are not just anarchics anarchist people just burn on institutions and, and so on i mean but they are like a glass helping us to bring the substance so like yesterday i, I had the, the good fortune of being speaking up to the curriculum a little bit with which and the mother and they were in, like uh, inviting me to to come here again i mean i'm still here <laughs> <laughs> so that's interesting logic please come back i'm here <laughs> no no but after you leave you come back oh i see okay thank you that's <laughs> i mean you you cannot wait for me to leave to tell me to come back that's that's very sweet from you thank you so much <laughs> so and, 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 and we were speaking they were telling very sincerely you know Maharaj, we feel that you are part of our family here and and I was feeling okay. I feel the same, and that's why I'm here, basically. No, I, mean, I, I could feel that before coming, and because if not, I wouldn't even bother to come here. I mean, with all respect, but I mean, it's not that I, I don't know how to fill my agenda, and I have to go somewhere. <laughs> so, so I felt okay. This is mutual. This is reciprocal. And but technically speaking, technically, I mean, institutionally speaking, we belong to different places. <laughs> so we are we are different institutionally if you want to put it in that term but you are telling me that you feel i am part of your family and i'm saying i also feel the same so then we have to recalculate recalibrate so what's the meaning of this what's the meaning of being part so we are different institution but one family so that's an important point to make over and over and over <laughs> no different institution one heart there's no there's no obstacle for it. it's not that oh you are in another institution or oh, we cannot belong to the same heart to the same family please do, do not conclude like that because if, if we think like that that goes against the very principle of sankirtan movement again we speak about the movement <laughs> and when we say movement again it's not institutional thing it's internal movement to begin with oh my heart has been moved by that person i'm joining that movement that movement that movement in the heart of that person. The heart is moving in a certain way <laughs> that creates a movement in my heart. I enjoy that. I mean, you can, I, I'm sure here we have some senior Vaishnav Prabhupada disciples. I'm sure if you, we ask them to, to give their testimony about how the heart was moved by hearing about Prabhupada. And not only them, I imagine most of us. So you feel some movement inside and then you join the movement outside, if you will. But it all begins by the, internal movement no? and that will direct us to the external movement mm -hmm. as Mahaprabhu always mentioned no? his inner reach his inner reach took him to his outreach no? whatever was moving inside of him whew, overflowed and started to move other people and created the movement Sri Chaitanya Manu Vishnam Shtapitam Yanagutale that's how Rupa Goswami is uh, respected by Sri Narutam Das Thakur he established the mission of Mahaprabhu in the world but Sri Chaitanya Mano Abhishtam, which has to do, the desire which was in the mind of Mahaprabhu took external form, was systematized on some level by Rupa Goswami, at least a soft form of institutionalization in the form of books. We have to begin somewhere. And gradually it took shape. Like Sila Siddhar Maharaj likes to say, what Mahaprabhu predicted, 
the name will be chanted every town and village. Bhaktivinoda Thakur started to conceive that. And that started to have shape in the form of Prabhupada Bhaktisiddhanta Gaudiyama. And then that was spread all over the world by Srila Prabhupada. You know what I'm <laughs> so we see there are different degrees of that. But all it all starts with some inner movement. And that creates the external movement as we know it today, if you will. But we should never lose track of that. Okay, external movement, institution, this is spreading, but it all begins in some deep corner of one deep heart <laughs> with some deep movement. And from that, all this is like overflowing in so many directions. So I'm saying these things. So we, when we say, okay, I belong to the Sankirta movement, I represent this particular institution in the context of Sankirta movement. All this is in the context of hmm, we belong to this same family, to this same heart, and we engage in in Sankirtan again as a way of giving something back, as a way of giving pleasure to the object of our affection. Hmm? As, as I said, having loving relationships among ourselves, sometimes we do not see that as seva. It's important that we also keep in mind chanting is seva as well. It's not say by something else. Say by only washing the pots, if you will, or collecting money, or we have some like a stereotype like this service. But sitting and chanting, that's seva. I would say even the more we see chanting as serv the more we see chanting as service, the more we will we will be able to see anything else as service. And the and the less you see chanting as service, the less you will be able to extend that service vision to any other thing you may be doing. So it, it all begins this root, hmm? this root, chanting, and with the proper, again, movement, if we want, just to conclude a play of words, we are speaking about movement, and we already say something about that Sankirtan movement, but Mahaprabhu also invites us to chant from a very particular place in our heart, from a very particular inner movement, which is Trinada Pisa Nichina Taroda Pisa Gishnu Namani Namanadina Kirtaniya My Guru Maharaj likes to say, if you want ecstatic movements, tremblings, and all that, first you have to begin with another movement. Put your head on the ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the type of movement. It all begins. Some humility is there. Mm -hmm. So gradually, mm -hmm. with that movement, other movements will will become more and more inside of us. Mm -hmm. In other words, this important verse of Sikshastakam tells. I mean, that requires a whole series of lectures for three lifetimes, basically. <laughs> but <laughs> briefly, this important verse, in one sense, is more important than the Maha Mantra because it's telling us how to chant hard enough. Krishna Das Kaviraj Kuswami said, if you chant with following this verse, you attain Prem. Implying, if you do not invoke this verse, you do not attain Prem. And this verse represents Nishta, which is our intermediate stage to the ultimate goal. And Nishta, in, 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 among many other things, have a lot to do with changing the disposition, the willingness to be transformed, mm -hmm. to be progressive in our practice, to have that preoccupation. I want to grow. I want to become a better disciple. I want to surrender more. To have that healthy, not neurosis, but healthy preoccupation. <laughs> so this is the spirit through which we should be engaging in this uh, chanting or crying yoga, mm -hmm. as we say in the beginning. So. From that side, we have to engage in some kirtan. Maybe we can do a very loud kirtan with 108 mridangas, but the heart has to be crying. Maybe if we, we, and you can just be singing in, in your closet, in your room. Nobody knows about that, but you are sincerely dropping one tear, externally or even internally, and that kirtan is way more louder, way more creative, more way impact in Bhagavan's heart than no matter how many whimpers and whatever <laughs> you can have so so some words we are, we are ready to do Madonna? yes sure, Maharaj. okay so so some words i want to share with you today concerning some thoughts about the spirit of kirtan the movement of san kirtan and i would like to conclude with some little uh surprise if you will that i would like to share yesterday we had the fortune was a surprise for all of us of having the darshan and so I felt with Dev Mada, well, I'm kind of indebted with him. He's sharing the darshan of his Guru Maharaj and so on. So I thought I'll try to reciprocate accordingly. So I wrote to my Guru Maharaj yesterday and told Guru Maharaj, we are having this Kirtan event. It's possible for you to share with us a few words. So he mercifully agreed. 
So I hope that technology is assisting us to have him here. Uh, he would like to share a few words in that connection. I don't see anybody else in the Zoom room. Mm -hmm. One second. You have connected to the... I'm in the room that you gave me the number for, yeah. Okay. And the password there. So maybe he's about to be connected. Let's see. Hmm. We're talking twelve forty five, so There he connected. So, Guru Maharaj, are you there? Can we hear? This is one second. One second that have no volume. Yes, can you speak to see if we can hear you? You want to use the mic to put turn because it's coming from the computer, right? Yeah. You can show the devotees to him, not he's already tired of seeing me. <laughs> Welcome, Maharaj, to the Harmony Collective. Thank you, Maharaj, for joining us. I'm honored. Thank you for the opportunity to meet all of you. You look very bright and enthusiastic. Um, so I was asked to try and begin, um, say a few words. Um, I was asked by Padmanabh Maharaj, as you know, um, to say something. And that, uh, in connection with or with regard to um, Arinam, given that apparently you just had a uh, retreat, Joppa retreat, I guess. We're doing 12-hour kirtan today, and Maharaj okay. just gave some nam kata, and you're the cherry on top of his kata. <laughs> <laughs> well, good, yeah. Uh, what, what can I say about a name? What, what's in a name? Quite a bit. <laughs> they say that... Uh, you come home and your, your daughter says, oh, uh, somebody, so -and -so, somebody calls and he said, did you, pull, what, did you get his name? And it, it, not, everything's lost if you didn't get his name, but if you got his name, then you can track him down. Or if you got his, his ID, right, his social security number, you can take his whole worth and, and, uh, and so on. So. These are, of course, material examples of the power of the name and, and um, with regard to the name of God. Um, it's so much more the case. It can be purchased by that. I want to say something, um, however, um, with regard to the the, the series of lectures that I understand uh, uh, for me has been giving on the, uh, the homage of uh, Brahma, homage of Go, to Gopal Krishna. There's about 30-some verses there that are very rich with the Gaudi uh, tattva or siddhanta or spiritual conclusions. And um, the prayers of Brahma, if you will, it's notable that they end with Namkirtan, the whole studio, the whole stream of verses full of tattva. They end with Namkirtan. He begins to seeing the names of, uh, of Krishna. 
in various names of Christian. And um, given that that's been the subject that he's been discussing, I, I doubt all of you have been attending. This is a weekend, and so mm -hmm. it's a bit of a treat. So many of you are present that could not be there otherwise, but you should try <laughs> whenever saintly people come to town to get their good association, regardless of their affiliation. <laughs> <laughs> he was a good good-hearted people. You can sort it out for yourself. If some people leave behind, some you take with you. You know, that's up to you. Myself, I remember when I was young, I had more opportunity to attend lectures than I do now. Now, other people attend my lectures. How good that is, uh, they can determine. But um, I used to think that if I could sit for what might be an hour, 45 minutes, or whatever the case, and get one good point to take home with me that I could put into my heart, and that could be in a, you know, a, a, a stone cornerstone or a, a stone in the foundation of the temple that I'm trying to build there, then, then my time would be well spent. Mm -hmm. um, so use your intelligence to discriminate and take advantage of the association. Try to draw something good from what I'm saying. It may be hard, I realize, <laughs> but, but try. So uh, the occasion, in one sense, of course, it, after so many prayers of so much philosophy, if you will, uh, uh, in Brahma's prayers, it's a, it's a central point that, from the point of view of philosophy, that the prayers form around, that point being, of course, that Krishna is the fountainhead of all forms of divinity. It's a very important point for us as Gaudiya Vaishnavas because if Krishna was not the source of all forms of God, if, if he was an incarnation of Narayan, then there would be no possibility for us to attain Gopi Bhav or Gopi Bhav because that's not happening in, in Vaikuntha. In Vaikuntha, where God is worshipped with Aishvarya, then uh, the possibilities of Dasya Rasa, Servitude, Shanta Rasa are there. It's a very peculiar place, Vaikuntha. <laughs> Most devotees there never seen Orion outside of their antakar, their internal experience of him in meditation. The vast, vast majority of them, many of them don't have a brain. They're there for the Sukhaish for the for the for the for the, uh, the perks of Vaikuntha. I'm living on the planet of God. Like most people want want to move maybe in the United States to or from these days, or latter, from California to go to a better place to live, where the governor is, whatever, you know, or, or one thing or, or another, or the press of the meeting, and we're, that's not something that they're even that, they're even, that, even that concerned with, obviously a little more so with regard to Clint, but anyway, the point being that there are many different types of, of devotees in my Clint, the more I talk about the less you'll want to go there, because you're wrong indoctrinated into 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 Gaudiya Vaishnavism more than you realize, and so you have some some scars for the what happens in the local, what the nature of the bhakti is there, the bhavas, and so forth, the intimacy, prospect, and so forth, that doesn't exist in Vaikuntha. So if Krishna, in short, is an incarnation of Narayan, then Narayan may show that face in Vaikuntha, but it's not. Um, he does that with his own entourage. It's not something you can enter into and be a coward, boy, or be a goofy there. You have to be a dasya. Uh, uh, so, without Krishna, because Krishna is the source of the mind, he has his own abode. And so, these possibilities of, of uh, love that we're attracted to in Gaudiya Sampradaya exist. But anyway, that's the central hub of the tattva of those prayers, as, as you know. And that said, philosophy, if you will, it has a point to it. It is not capable of capturing, and even coming close to capturing, that which it speaks about, that which it thinks about, which is beyond thought, beyond word. But when empowered people who have an experience that transcends word, speech, mind, 
come back from that and then try to talk about that and put it in language and put it in the thought, that thought has some power, no doubt, right? That thought has some power, but its power ultimately will be determined by the extent to which it equips us and inspires us to practice, to engage in transrational exercises, which of course the best example of is Harikirtan. Harisan Kirtan. This is the method to Jaitanya Mahaprabhu's madness. I remember sitting once with Guru Puriva Sami Maharaj Gadabhu, my Guru Maharaj. And we were in Vrindavan and uh, there was some talk about Raga Bhakti and someone was getting a little bit um, uh, in their questioning beyond their adhikar, their their ability to really assimilate and understand. And so he, uh, rather than answer, uh, he chuckled and said, Prabhu, you try to do this. Chant Hare Krishna without offense. Because if you can't get beyond that, there's no reason to get into, into, into the Vrindavan Leela. So you might want to just focus there. And, and so, the, so anyway, the philosophy is, is, is um, useful. It's useful to be a Gaudiya philosopher if and as much as in doing so and preoccupying oneself with the tattva, it gives rise to inspiration and better equips one to do that, which doesn't require a whole lot of thinking. Prabhupada was asked what to think about when chanting. He said, give the mind a rest. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Yes, if you can't just listen <laughs> and give the mind a rest, you can think with your mind about Krishna also. Hmm? But what you can think about with your mind about Krishna will be only a shadow of the experience that you have with Krishna. When you arrest, when the mind becomes arrested by the kirtan, and in the form of Krishna, which is within his nam, expresses itself. When the guna, the lila, the rupa, and the parshadas, the form, the qualities, the lila, the associates of Krishna, they're all within his name. They, they can, will come out and reveal themselves so in, in, in such successively. Rupa, guna, lila, parshad. You can't have lila without parshad. Parshad means associates. So, so the, the fact, anyway, that Brahma concluded his prayers with Nam Sankirtan is, is, is uh, uh, seeks, if you will, or serves to, or the one who pays attention to illustrate this point. Krishna didn't respond to any of Brahma's prayers. He didn't answer anything. <laughs> Brahma did Sankirtan, and then he went off, and according to the Bhagavatam, apparently that Sankirtan continued and caused his perfection. Brahma attained perfection according to the Bhagavatam through Sankirtan. For that we, we can refer to the text uh, in the 11th canto, Jayam Sada, Bodhivatna Vrishtadu, Tirtas Padam, Shiva Vrinchinutam, Charanyam, Vrittartiham Prandakala Prabhupadam, Vande Mahapanchite Charanyam. This is a famous verse from Bhagavatam, and you all know it. Some of it, some of you should know. Uh, know what it means anyway, what's being said there. This is a verse that's describing uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, 11th canto, fifth chapter of the Bible. It says, Jayam Sada. The word Jayam means worship. It's it's derived from or related to, we say, Dimahi, meditation. The Bhagavatam begins with an advocacy of Dimahi, Satyam Param Dimahi. Uga <clears throat> Swami in Kram Sandarva comments on the word Dimahi, and he says it's in the plural, and thus it implies that everyone can do it. It's for everyone and for all times and all places. So what kind of meditation can be done at all times in all places by everyone? 
Jayam Sada. Sada means always. So, Bhakti Sadat Sarsun Dakun is comment on this verse of Bhagavatam in the 11th canto. It says, Jayam is related to Dimahi. Dimahi is in the plural, as we've explained. Jayam Sada, it, 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 it means what is the meditation that you can do, that everybody can do at all times and all places? Well, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has explained that himself in his Shikshastha. What does he say? Any time. Meditation should be done at certain times by certain people facing certain directions under certain conditions with and, and with a certain condition of the heart, it becomes possible to participate in such. Dhyan as described in the Gita, has some prerequisite, right? Meditation. You could say, you can advocate meditation, but the Gita med advocates purification of heart so that one can meditate. Because, sure, it's easy to sit, but then again, it's not so easy to sit, is it? There are many things that cause you to get up and they're in the heart. When they're gone, you can sit. If they're replaced, by something that's 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 more colorful, if you will, more attractive. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the power. Of course, Nam goes into the heart, you know, in a very humble way. Uh, some poets have described him as a sweeper. He comes to sweep the heart. It's the beginning of Nam, the efficacy of Nam, cleansing. Cheto darpana margin. Cheto darpana marginal to cleanse the mirror of the heart, which is faced towards the world. It gets impressions from the world. Those should be erased and replaced with impressions of Krishna. Hmm. So Nam is both a, both a cleaner and a decorator, hmm. uh, interior decorator, we can call it. So he enters with a broom, very humbly. I mean, what's going on in the heart? So many multinational uh, corporations are lit up in their neon signs to pre you know, buy me, be this, go here. And, and, and so many clever psychological uh, 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 advertising uh, ploys, if you will, you know, to capture the attention of the world, multi million dollar. Uh, uh, Expenses, if you will, just to, to, to capture potential uh, consumers, buyers. Somebody comes in with selling brooms, you know. I mean, it's not very the comparison is like, cool. Okay, I'll buy one. I, you know, it's it, none, it's free. Take it. Okay, I'll, I'll be nice to the guy and take the broom. But meanwhile, there are many more, you know, attractive um, uh, things offering themselves to me. You're offering broom, that means some work. Anyway, so a little sweeping, I'll do. But the sweeping of Nam uncovers, in the context of Nam, the potential of the heart, the, 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 of the Atma, in connection with body, Shama, and just a, just, a, just a spark of that will, will make, the, make the, the neon lights of the corporate uh, uh, elite go out, look dark, meaningless in comparison. Just a little experience of what it means to be an Atma in connection with with with, with Paramatma, with, with Bhagavan. It makes the whole, it makes everything, the, all the prospects of the world, even in youth, <laughs> in youth, oh, the, 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 the prospects are very strong. As a, as a young boy, only at 21 years old, the whole world evaporated for me. This would be meaningless. Just by a little glimpse of what, what, what the prospect of the self is in connection with bhakti, which is brought about by Nam. Just a little, little sweeping. Sweep, sweep, sweep. Let the dust that comes off cover all those lights and put them out. So Mahaprabhu says what about this Nam? He says, he calls it smarnam. Hmm? He says, uh, smarnalakale, doing meditation. He's speaking about nam. Hmm? 
because it's Maranam. Kirtana Prabhavi, Smaranam Swaravi. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarji Thakur put it like this by the power of Kirtan, the force of this, its efficacy in, our, in the present time, in particular, it, 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 its capacity to arrest the mind and the senses is overwhelming. And it will afford one meditation, which is central to the rod mark, very naturally, without an artificial uh, uh, effort, if you will. That's why Bhakti no Thakur, as an aside, used to say, let meditation on Ragmarg come later when one is in the stages of Muchi and Asakti, because without a taste, how will you maintain that? A taste it will come. So Mahaprabhu, well, the point here, Mahaprabhu says that these names of Krishna, <clears throat> these primary names, uh, are filled with all of his shaktis, and they can be employed in meditation, if you will, uh, at any time, at any place, with no rules or regulations that ordinarily govern the meditation on different mantras. This non-mantra is not like that. It's for everyone. It can be done in your sleep and it will be efficacious. It can be done while eating, Bhagavatam says. Um, Mahaprabhu was worried at one time because his tongue was always vibrating the name but when he went in to, to, to uh, uh, use the bathroom facilities, typically you don't do worship in the bathroom. Hmm? He considered the name like non different from the deity. I can't bring the deity into the bathroom, but he won't leave my tongue. So he was con concerned. And um, I, he later became known as, uh, what was his name? Gopal Guru Goswami. Gopal Guru Goswami. Gopal Guru. Mahaprabhu said, Gopal Guru, you are my guru. He said to him, because, because Gopal Guru said to him, no, don't think like that. For the name of Krishna, the, 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 there's, there, are no, there are no rules. He can be chanted anywhere, any, anytime. Mahaprabhu accepted this, incorporated that into his shikshastakam. Mm -hmm. So this is this is Jayam Sada. This is a Dimahi. This is a meditation. Everyone can do anywhere, any place, at all times. At all circumstances. Now, of course, Kirtan is different than Smarnam, but as much as Kirtan, as I'm explaining, fosters Smarnam, but all of you can separate the two. In Gaudiya Vaishnavism, one Kirtan leads to the other, where one is chanting and it's bringing about spontaneous uh, meditation upon the, the form, experience of the Guru, the Leelas, and so forth of Krishna. So, the verse in Bhagavad Jayam Sada Parimbhavna Vishnu says, Oh, he's all worshipable. Jayam Sada, all worshipable. At all times, all places, by everyone. Jayam Sada Parimbhavna Vishnu Parimbhavna Vishnu Vishnu. Parimbhav means it, it removes all uh, molestation. <laughs> molestation of the mind and senses, the harassment of them. It removes them and of Vishta. It, it, it fulfills the, the real ambition, the prospect, is prospect of the Atma, of the self. And then, Tirtaspadam, Shiva Marijinu Tamsharanyam. So here we find uh, the Brahma. After doing the Sankirtan, the names of Krishna, these prayers continued on with this and reached perfection through it because Bhagavatam says here, Dear Tastalam Shiva Murinchi Nutam Sharanam. So speaking about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as the verse goes on, it says here that even Shiva and Brahma, Murinchi here means Brahma. They worship, they charanam, they, 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 kirtaspadam. His feet are like a kirtan. And Brahma and Shiva take shelter of them. Krishna Chakvitago in his verse says, this means 
Shnech means Haridas, that means uh, Advaita and Haridas, Shiva and Brahman, respectively, in Kali Yuga, taking birth, hmm? and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Slila, engaging in Namsan Kirtan. Haridas Thakur, of course, was uh, dubbed the Nama Charja by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is Brahma. Oh, this is also the opinion of Bhakti Muttapa. This is also the opinion of, of um, Murari Gupta. There are other opinions also about um, Haridas and so forth, but this is Brahma. That the Brahma of the Brahma Vimo Anavela, who ended his prayers in Sankirtan, was taken to, to, to Gaur Lila to perfect himself in Kirtan, taking birth as a Muslim for his offense. That's an important point about Nam brought up here. Goswami says what? In a Nam and Ami no. The name and the name are non different. At the same time, there's a difference between them. What's the difference between the name and the name? Who can say? Name is more merciful. The name is more merciful than the named. That means that if we offend the named, the name will not will stay with us. Mahaprabhu shows this also in the second verse of Shastra. He, he, he says that uh, even though I have an artist, they're getting in my way. I have no real appreciation for the greatness, the generosity of the name. Flexibility with which it, 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 it uh, comes to me and affords me the opportunity to participate, the prospect of the thing, um, because I have a Marcus. It's, it's, um, I can't appreciate it, but it's, it's staying with me nonetheless. It said if we offend the deity, it will be counteracted by non kirtan. And we see this in a light. Of as Brahma, he offended Krishna in his own mind. How much Krishna took offense? Well, that's another thing. But it said that for whatever offense, however minor, he had to take birth outside the Varnashram system uh, and in, in, in a in a in a, in a, um, in a birth that was not conducive in and of itself to what the Hindus practiced at the time. And Gaudi Vaishnavism was created within the context of, of Hinduism, if you will. So Haridas, from the Orthodox Hindu perspective, was an outcast, um, wasn't allowed to participate. Um, but the generosity of Nam that was so centered on by, by, by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that stands on the head is non Sankirtan of Varnashram. It does away with all the rituals, necessity of all of them. <laughs> it's the speciality of uh, the, the ritual of non Sankirtan, the, the yogi of non Sankirtan, as is described in the same chapter, 11th chapter, chapter of the Bhagavatam, 11th chapter of the Bhagavatam. Nityananda, who embraced all the disenfranchised socially religiously disenfranchised mercantile community of Sattagram in West Bengal. <clears throat> and even one ritual that all of them could perform would have a, 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 a higher result than those of Varnashram that they had been ostracized from that being nice and Kirtan. So Bhastakur was embraced by Mahaprabhu. In fact, prior to Mahaprabhu's appearance, it's well known in Chaitanya, Bha, uh, Chaitanya uh, biographies that Wait Prabhu called for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to appear. And he, and he called for him to do the Bhakti, worshipping Shalagram Shila hmm, with water from the Ganga and Tulsi leaves. He brought the Yuga Avatar. Hmm. But it said in Chaitanya Charitamrita at the same time, hmm, Haridas Thakur, through his Nam Smarna, petitioned Krishna to appear. Mm -hmm. that is the, and that is the preoccupation of Ragmar, non-smarna, non non-dharma. Mm -hmm. 
more than ritualistic worship. We have a place for archer, of course, but it's also filled with nam, surrounded by nam, kirtan, and so forth. So Haida Stakur had a role also in bringing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to the world. And when he, he was elder, as he aged and became closer to the time of his departure, he made a request to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that you put your feet, as this verse in the Bhagavad Gita says, that are, the, that are themselves a place of uh, worship, a tirtha, put those feet on my chest and let me look into your eyes and, and lead the world in this way. And Mahaprabhu gave him that blessing. Put his feet on his chest. Jayam Sada, Chitaspadam, Shiva Marinchi, and Gamsharam. And wait that maybe he was kicked by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu <laughs> when, he, when he preached live by philosophy to be kicked by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That was what he petitioned for. Then Mahaprabhu will show that he, I will make Mahaprabhu show, although he protests, and he will show that he's actually a worshipable deity of myself, not vice versa. Um, that's another story. But with regard to Aridas, Brahma Aridas, Mahaprabhu put his feet on his chest, looked him. They looked at him in his face and he passed from the world in this way. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took the Muslim so called form body of the of, of Haridas and danced with the body in his arms. And then he, with his own hands, dug in the sand a, what, would, what would become the basis of the Samadhi of the tomb of Haridas Thakur and said, Whoever worships this place and, 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 uh, will attain all the all desirable um, results of praying bhakti. The implication was that by Nam, hmm, which was central, obviously, to the life of Haridas Stakur, all the Prabhu karma was eradicated. It's even the Prabhu karma. Bhakti is said to be so efficacious compared to Gyan that it can remove Prabhu karma, which Gyan cannot. And within, and making in making this statement as the Bhagavatam does, it does so in the context of glorifying this anga of bhakti, nam kirtan, hmm? nam kirtan, and Haridas Thakur, Brahma Haridas, we should say, as the way he used to refer to him, hmm? is an example of that. Hmm? How comprehensive is the method? Uh, to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mad madness, that it can remove all the Parabdha karma, it means the body, which is Parabdha karma, <coughs> which was untouchable from the Varnashram point of view, became worshipable from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's perspective by the virtue of, of Nam Kirtan. The power of Kirtan <laughs> to turn something material into the spiritual. Hmm. And Mahaprabhu said, when you get initiated, this becomes your potential. That your sadhaka deha, your practitioner's body, become chinmoya, chinanamoya. The more you make your sadhaka deha spiritual by using your senses in relation to sense objects for the pleasure of Krishna, rather than in relation to sense objects to foster your material sense of identity, which is what we do without thinking. So think, don't do that. Use them to glorify Krishna, and you'll get a body mm -hmm. suitable for worshiping Krishna. As much as your sadhaka day becomes purified from Nam Sankirtan, arising within naturally mm -hmm. will, be a, will be a meditative body for Krishna and Lila, mm -hmm. two bodies. Mm -hmm. One for Borli, where you can go in this body, mm -hmm. and one for Krishna and Lila. Such is the power of Namsan Kirtan. We'll learn a little bit about this from considering Brahm's prayers. So that's a few words. I don't want to take time from your chanting. That's more important than my talking. So I appreciate the opportunity to say a few words and that would be company to meet with you. I have been invited to that location where you are in the past. And I forgive me for not uh, not coming up. Semi-retired now, but I did uh, suggest that uh, I'm not marched over there, so uh, 
Maybe I'll come at some point. Yeah. It looks like a nice. nice Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and I'm the Koti Vaishnava in the key.